Three new driver heads from Cobra Golf. Mark Crossfield here. I'm going to be testing the Max, the LTDX Max, the LTDX LS, so low spin, and the LTDX. This one, the X, is the unicorn, apparently. It's the best of both worlds. Indoors and a bit on the course. Let's show you what they're all about. So we're going to look at the tech in a second. We've got three heads. So we've got the low spin here on my left, which looks great. We've got the X, which is the unicorn, low spin and high MOI. And then we got the Max, which has more of a draw bias. So the Max has the weight in the heel and the back. The LS two weights mid to front of the face of the head. And the Unicorn X has the one horn just at the back, because it's a unicorn. See what I did there? We're getting matte black finishes, little bit of carbon graphite coming through on the top. To be fair, with the outline of the top of the head, so this shinier kind of rim around it, and then the duller top bit looks a little bit like the tailor-made stealth, to be honest, almost like exactly the same like that's amazingly similar we get these two ribs on top as well like i say we'll talk about the tech in a second and we get the milling they're using computer learning plus milling expertise to create the best drivers they've ever created is what cobra is saying so i'm going to start collecting numbers talk about sounds and fields going to start with the unicorn the x to kick us off like I say, I've got outdoor testing as well to see what the contrast is. That feels solid as always. Cobra, underrated, just makes such good drivers. And they're not crazy expensive as well, which is interesting in this day and age. That does feel really solid. Makes a lovely sound right in the middle of that kind of, you know, carbony, neutral to firmer sound. It sits lovely and neutral down by the ball. And there's plenty of head down there as well. A little bit off the top, that one has gone very high, but definitely plenty of head down by the ball. And I like the very subtle contrast between face and top, the shinier bit to the more matte bit. It's just a good looking club again. So LS next, looks great. Really looks good, this one down by the ball. Oh yeah, that feels and sounds blooming lovely. Just going to hit three more with the X. I thought they were going a bit high. So the next extensive, I'm down at a nine degree here and I had it in plus 0.1.5 where I actually wanted it in minus. The old eyes are struggling a bit. Definitely in minus. Now just going to hit three more with the X. We are going to hit much more shots than this just as the video goes. That looks better as well. The other one I was thinking, oh, this looks like there's a lot of loft there. There you go. Bit toey, but much more forward flight on that. Ah, a little leaky. Look at that. Look, 157, 157, 155, miss it. 153, 153. That's the other one. So basically, these three are coming out. The importance of custom fitting right there. So back to the low spin. Call it a bit out the bottom and it's a bit low launching, but it's doing well considering where I hit that. So low spin and the X are the unicorn, so maybe the two most popular, I would say, to people we try. Definitely the low spin looks a fraction smaller. I reckon the CC is the same, it's just it's a bit more stretched back in the X. As you can imagine with the X, they're trying to get that MOI up as high as possible. They're saying, which we'll look at in the text, that they've maxed it out, which is going to be from that more stretched back design. Yeah, that's a better shot. Oh, it's a little dippy actually. It'll be interesting to see how lower spinning that is. I mean, that is going to run forever, but it's a bit of a low spin over exaggeration, I would guess. Gonna hit three more with the max, and then I'm gonna take the unicorn out on the course and come back, and as I hit more data to get a better data set, we'll show you the numbers with all three. Yeah, the max looks big down by the ball, maybe slightly different shaping. In the toe, it's slightly different on the draw version, so the max, they didn't call it a draw version, and it's got a slightly duller rim around the top, so this is the maxi, it's dulled off slightly. So there is slight subtle differences in the look between all three of them, but it's very subtle. This one is in the correct loft. Call it slightly clean. So it's going to just spin up a little bit, but doing well. Oh yeah, hit that good. 
doesn't feel crazy drawy either, to be fair. I have got the 10 gram at the back, so obviously you could flip these weights over. So 10 gram, two gram, I'm presuming we could flip them if I wanted to make this shape into more of a draw. Uh, it does look slightly different, not as appealing to my eye in here, but I mean, it still looks good, feels great. Can you see there, look, I've hit that pretty straight and that with, I reckon, a neutral club would have been a fraction more. I thought that was going to turn more to the right. So I don't think anything turns anything into a draw these days. I hope we understand that, but it can calm shapes patterns down a little bit. Feels good. So I took the X out on the course. Let's show you how I got on as I collect a bit more data and then we'll come in, show you the numbers. I always like to try and get them out on the course as much as possible because you have so many different emotions out here than you do say in the fitting bay. So first initial thoughts of that, it makes that medium sound. It sounds good out here. It's right, it's kind of like a crack rather than a ting, but it's, it's on the duller side, but it's not dull. It feels solid. Flight was exactly what I would expect to see from that strike. It was a nice kind of high-ish toe, low spin. So tiny bit of draw from the strike and a little bit higher because it was higher on the face, but like, it's good. It's gonna be up there for me on this one. Lovely, perfect drive. We are winter rules today, so don't worry. I am gonna place, you are allowed to place in the UK at this time of year. Um, question, how many of you think it's important to get a driver out on the course and hit it? One of the most common uh, responses I used to get when I fit clubs lots and worked in shops and I still see it now online is I hit the club great in the bay and then get out on the course and it's no different or it's worse, those kind of ideas. And this idea, and I'd like to know what you think, is because often the data, the way you look at data in a launch monitor, let, like, like I'm not skilled in it, I'm still trying to get better and learn it, but I've learned so much in recent years from people who actually study stats. Golf pros generally aren't that good at it. They use averages a lot, which mean nothing. You won't see averages out here hardly ever unless you can get them to repeat and repeat and repeat. And the delete button's used a lot. So get rid of that shot, get rid of that shot, which we all do to kind of massage our egos. When you get the reality of out here on the course, trying to find a 0 0.02 gain, which is what you might have seen on, inside on average, it's just not going to show through. That's why getting out here is quite important. If you want to buy a shiny new thing this will make it very clear if it's a shiny new thing or if you're actually moving the ball into different spots of the course than you're used to or reaching this par five into with a six iron or a seven iron rather than maybe like a long hybrid club or fairway wood let me know your comments indoors outdoors what do you think so what I like to do when I get outside with a new driver is try things that make sense in a playing situation that I'm used to. This hole I'm trying to hug the left side as much as possible. I'm not going to get over the bunker today because of the wind and it's wet and cold, but where how far down it goes in relationship to where I would normally go in these conditions. And what happens when I'm giving it a bit more? These are questions I need to know the answer to. And where I can do that inside Outside, I can do it with real trouble and nerves and anxiety. I'm looking if that goes higher, more left, more right. That's a rip and on a good line. Unfortunately, it's starting to rain. Let's see if this passes or we'll jump back inside. So this is my second one. These are the bunkers I want to fly in the summer. And there is my first one slightly down the left up there. Two good drives, exactly what I would expect. So am I seeing improvements there? No, I'm not. I'm seeing exactly where I'd expect them to go. Is that a surprise? No, I'm feeling a club that feels great off the face. I feel like I can do what I want with it, hit it hard and it's soft. I could shape it, all those things that I'm pretty sure I could do with any club. But what's happening is what I feel indoors is reflecting outdoors, which is what I like. If you're someone who has different results indoors to outdoors, really important that you get outdoors because obviously the emotions and the challenge of the real environment are affecting you more than what you do indoors. You know, I'm quite an experienced indoor tester, so I can recreate in my mind the real situations to try and put myself under similar, not the same, similar ideas of pressure I would get out here. 
all I'm feeling in a minute is another Cobra driver that feels great at a pretty good price compared to where maybe some of the other clubs are. It does amaze me that people spend more. It really does. I think the X is an interesting idea in it's maxing out everything as much as you could measure that. I think it's hard to, but it does feel very stable and I do love the way it looks. It looks great indoors, outdoors, just looks good down by the ball. And in amongst the trees here, it makes a pretty solid, nice sounding crack. Again, it's right in that middle ground for sound. And it does feel as stable, like I say, as anything out there. It's up there with the Rogue and the Ping in feelings. Obviously quantifying with data what stable actually means, as I've done many videos on, is so hard, even though I see so many people say, oh, the MOI is higher, and so it's going to be better for me. Well, I couldn't find MOI on extreme drivers. Maybe check that video out. Hit that really well as well pretty neutral flight and that's what i like i'm not getting any like strange shapes and that's the other reason i like to come out and see the ball flight if i can i trust indoors but indoors sometimes read load spinners a little bit funny and i think have i actually hit that shot i never really see that shot outside that is feeling super solid you can see i enjoyed it out on the course it was good i've just got a few more to hit with the x indoors to finish these numbers off let's have a look at the tech now see what cobra are saying about their drivers so all three drivers are using machine learning and cnc machining to deliver the kind of hottest face and highest mois as well as using multi materials as they can so the ideas of the three heads we've got the ls is the low spinning model designed for skilled players with faster swing speed desired maximum workability is what they're saying the max is the combination of stability and draw bias and then the x is the perfect blend of low spin and the max it's the first driver that's got the 520 moi is what they're saying so the x and the ls both feature a 10 and a 3 gram weight can be exchanged with either front heel toe for fine tuning a traditional 460 head shape the pwr cor tech technology positions as much weight low and forward using a 14 gram MIM steel weight and a 5 gram 100% mill stainless steel external weight. Hot face technology on those. Machine learning creates 15 unique zones. They've both got multi material construction, 8 gram lighter titanium sachet that allows for 30% more carbon fiber to be used to try and increase that MOI, where the max has the changeable weights into the heel and into the back, giving it that little bit more draw, but still has the same face technology, as well as the same build construction. All come with a changeable neck as well, allowing you to dial in your lofts for getting the most out of your club for launches and directional a little bit as well. So all three drivers in theory, a really good mix of technology and providing each launch that a golfer might need from a low spin to a draw bias to in theory in the max, or sorry, in the X, into a combination of both. So packed with tech, as you can imagine, here's the numbers. You can see the ball speeds very close with all of them, the X and the LS just overlapping. You can see that in the batch of shots. You can see I had a few wild ones with the X rather than the LS. So you can spin very close, highest spinning in the max. I hit less shots in the max. I wouldn't use the max. It doesn't suit my eye. I don't like the shape of it as much and I don't need a draw bias driver. So I hit less with that. It's the other two for me I'm really interested in. It doesn't mean the max isn't a good driver to test. It might be absolutely perfect for you to get out there and test looks fine and you see how close the distances are with all three even the max which i think is interesting because it shows you I mean, there's three heads here but they all run into each other they overlap you could argue the ls was slightly longer but again the standard deviations on these two overlap them no standard deviations on the max because i only hit two or three shots with it. i think it was two it boiled down to because there was one that was a crazy spin and I've, i could get what i want out of the max as well i could lower this down i could you know, I could work on that. I just don't want it when there's two other models that suit me. Three really good drivers there that are all performing, as you'd imagine from Kobo, just fantastically. It's a little game to finish and I'm gonna use the LS, the low spin, the 320 green. Anyone who watches my videos, that 320 green can't be got unless I get a crazy low spin misread off foresight. So let's see if I can just squeeze a little bit more 
out of the LTD X LS. To be fair, I am more of a fan of names of clubs, Stealth, Rogue, Epic. These like LTD X LS, just whoa. Right, can I? I'm gonna say no, but let's see if I can get there. I'm just gonna flip this over to get these last batch. I'm just gonna call this driver. I think it's always quite interesting to compare the styles of hitting when I'm trying to jump out of my boots. So just look at that low spin dipper. It's a 161 ball. I'm gonna change my mind. I think I'm gonna go unicorn. Get rid of that low spin a little bit, possibly. I'm gonna go the X. It'll be hard to choose between these two. I think I'm gonna choose the X, let's see. Yeah, I just think that's not a great hit and that's so much more sustainable over a number of shots for me, that. It's not gonna reach anything. 159 ball speed on a slight miss hit, 2.9 spin. I like that spin going up rather than ripping down really low and you're getting those dippy traces. Come on, X. You haven't got a painted red face, so you obviously aren't a revolution. Can you get me there? One of these clubs must get me there with a real shot. <laughs> There's so much tech. I mean, what are they doing all day? That's a good effort on a proper hit. 308, 160 ball, 2-1 spin. That's starting up the right. Well done, X. So obviously I'm going at my fastest, fastest speed, which then makes me feel like I'm gonna have a variation of strike. So I am jumping into the higher MOI head. I can still mishit it, obviously, but the low spin hit like this, I just think I'm gonna to have too many dippers. I think that's a really interesting point again for your fits and what have you. There you go, started that a bit further right. I felt like I got that. Yep, it's doing well, it's not as long. I say it says two six spin, one five nine ball. Can't get up to the one six five balls that I got. I even touched the one seventy, but that was after two coffees. I need to get on the old training again. Nope, that's a miss it. Speeds were up, but it won't be, look at it, high and wafty. Right, just one more. Pretty good for a miss it again, that one five nine ball. All right, last one. God, I didn't draw it enough. Have I? Go! No, that's a good effort for me. One six, one ball, just one more. Ah, oh, this is silly. I've gone low spin, because if I can get that strike with this, that's a two six spin. If I got that at a two two spin, that would have got there. But this has the potential to go wrong as well. Like that. <laughs> that's a complete miss here. Just one more. If I was training, I would feel like I could get the strike with this club. The, the low spin has the potential, and it's not crazy low spin. I do just feel the stability in the, the X. What we got here? Keep going. Keep going. This will get there. It's just up the left foot. Yeah, 163 ball, 310. That gets front edge. That's interesting, isn't it? Look how it just jumps. My average is no longer, look, it falls in the pack. My ball speed just jumps up with higher potential. Launch stays the same. Spin has the most standard deviation. It's just me. The mess of the human constantly comes out. These all overlap if you want them to. As always from Cobra, three very good drivers at often a more reasonable price. I would be right between the X and the LS. Is this the unicorn everyone's been looking for? Maybe you test the side and let me know. I'm just seeing three really well-made, solid drivers that Cobra have been making for a lot of years now. Get out there and test them. Yeah, enjoyed that. Oh, LS or X, hard to choose. I just need to get stronger.